right? So today we're gonna compute this integral together. Integral from 0 to pi over 2, ln of sine x dx. Alright, what's up everyone? Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. If this is your first time here, thank you for checking out my channel and my video, and don't forget to subscribe. So the other day, I scrolled through my Twitter, which is something I usually do every day, and I saw a tweet from Professor Steven Strokatz saying that this integral right here, his friend know how to solve it in six ways, and asked like, how many ways do you guys know how to solve it? So I looked at this as like, mm, this is a very interesting integral, maybe I give it a try. I found one solution, not six, but here I am, I would like to show it to you. And as usual, bring out pen and paper and try to solve this by yourself first. I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two by just solving this problem. But if you're ready, here we go. So how can we attack this integral? This is one of those functions that you probably cannot find a nice formula for antiderivative of this guy and just plug in value. Even though you cannot find antiderivative of this guy, you can still find the value of definite integral. And the most common way to do this is just give this guy a name. Let's say that this guy equal to i, and then you manipulate this integration, and hopefully, new version of integration will be accessible in terms of i too. So what is the first thing we can do? Well, when you see sine, you want to exploit the fact that sine is periodic, right? So, so in this case, I look at 0 to pi over 2. Maybe if I switch the order, meaning if I go from pi over 2 to 0, I'll get something nice. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do u substitution. If I let u be pi over 2 minus x, when x is 0, u be pi over 2. When x is pi over 2, u be 0. So u will be a new variable that just go from pi over 2 to 0. And with that, du will be minus dx. Alright, so let's do that. Alright, so first off, I have integration du. Since du is minus dx, dx is minus du. And u go from pi over 2 to 0. So we have something like this, right? So how do we compare this guy to this guy? Well, let's simplify it a little bit first. If you want to compare this guy to the original one, well, you might want to switch um, the bound. So it go from 0 to pi over 2. But switching the bound just introduce the minus sign. But luckily, we have minus sign here. And switching the bound will cancel with this minus sign. Just 0 to pi over 2, ln of sine pi over 2 minus u du. And what is sine of pi over 2 minus u? If you remember this, this is just cosine, or you can draw a triangle and continue to sell that. If this is u, this is u, this is pi over 2 minus u, sine of pi over 2 minus u will be the bottom side over the hypotenuse, which is the same as cosine of u, which is the bottom side over hypotenuse. This easily become ln of cosine u du. Alright, so great! We have integration from 0 to pi over 2 ln of sine evaluated to the same value as the same integral but you change inside function from sine to cosine. Alright, and u is just dummy variable so I'm just gonna replace u by x so we have i not only equal to integral from 0 to pi over 2 ln of sine, i also equal to integral from 0 to pi over 2 ln of cosine. So we have i equal to something, i equal to something, what should we do? Well, you might think that, okay, maybe you can equate two of them, right? And something nice will happen. Well, we don't want to do that. Remember, we want to solve for i. So we better keep i in our equation. Instead of equating them together, what we can do, which might not be super intuitive to you, is we can add them. And the sole reason why we want to add them, because we want to keep i in our equation. So let's add and see what happens. Since the bound for both integral is 0 to pi over 2, so we can just combine the integral then we just add the integrand together. Alright, so we have ln of something plus ln something. This should remind you of identity for ln. ln of product is just sum of ln. So we have sum of ln here, so this reduced down to ln of product. So we have ln sine x cosine x dx. Alright, and what should we do next? Hmm. We see sine times cosine. This should remind you every time of double angle formula. So this is the double angle formula. Sine of 2x is just twice of sine x cosine x. Now we have sine x cosine x here. So this just becomes half of sine of 2x. 
Once again, we're gonna use identity on ln. ln of a quotient is just different of ln. So we have sine 2x over 2, so it's gonna be sine of top minus sine of bottom. And this is nice, right? Because this guy is a constant. So when we split the integral into two parts, we can integrate this part. It will be just this guy times the length of the integral we're integrating over, which is pi over 2. Alright, so so far so good. We want to know i, we don't know how to solve for i, but if we evaluate 2i, we get this formula and can be simplified as this guy. So if we somehow know this guy in terms of i, then we can solve for i, right? Because this is a constant. Mm -hmm. So let's recap what happened really quickly. We start off i equal to integral of ln sine. We do some quick substitution and we conclude that i also equal to integral of ln of cosine. Then we add those two together, do some simplification, and then we conclude that 2i equal to integration of ln of sine 2x minus a constant term. So if we can figure out this guy, then we can solve for i. So how do we do this? So again, we want to compare this guy back to this guy, right? Um, so this is x and x, this is 2x and x, so the hope is we want to rewrite this guy in terms of this guy. So the best thing to do is you just let this guy be u and see what happens. So if you let u equal to 2x, du will be 2dx, which gives us dx equal to a half du. When x is 0, u is 0. When x is pi over 2, u become pi. ln is still ln, sine is still sine. 2x become u, and dx become a half u. Alright, once again, u is just dummy variable, so we can just replace u by x, so it looks similar to the original one. And we have something like this. So this is nice, right? So everything after integration sign looks exactly like i, but instead of integrating from 0 to pi over 2, we have integration from 0 to pi. So what's happening here? How do we compare this guy to the original i? So this part, you might be able to guess what's going on. So graph of sine looks like this. You start off at 0, you peak at pi over 2, and then you come back to 0 at pi. So if you want to do some integration from 0 to pi over 2, and then you want to do another integration from pi over 2 to pi, since it's symmetric over its peak, which is pi over 2, like the first part and the second part should be the same. Which suggests that this guy should be just twice of this guy. So integration from 0 to pi is nothing but twice of integration from 0 to pi over 2. So if this were to be true, then the integration that we're interested in would be i. So this guy is i, and let's see what happened. So if our guess were to be true, meaning this guy is actually i, then 2i equal to i minus pi over 2, ln 2, which makes us conclude that i is nothing but minus pi over 2, ln 2. Alright, so we have i equal to minus pi over 2 times ln of 2, which turned out to be a correct answer. So for me, I think this is a um, pretty nice solution already. Um, of course, we haven't shown that this um, integration turned out to be i. But for me, symmetry of sine gives a pretty good argument why this guy is equal to i. Alright, but just in case you guys want to see too why integration of this guy become i, let me show you really quickly too. Alright, so the question is, why integration of half of this function equal to i? Right. So left hand side is just a half is still there, but integration from 0 to pi can be split as 0 to pi over 2 and pi over 2 to pi. And this is precisely i, right? The question is, what do we do with that one? Well, again, we want to make this guy comparable to the original one. The first thing you notice is that the bound is not right, right? It's pi over 2 to pi. We want it to be 0 to pi over 2. So we can do another u substitution here. We can let u be x minus pi over 2. And the reason why we do that because remember, we want to make this guy become 0 to pi over 2. When x is pi over 2, u is 0. When x is pi, u is pi over 2. If you do substitution by let u be x minus pi over 2, when this guy becomes du, your integration will be from 0 to pi over 2. So 0 to pi over 2, ln still ln, sine still sine, x will become u plus pi over 2. And this time du is same as dx. So this look closer to the original i, but not quite um, the same yet because we have sine of something plus pi over 2 instead of just sine. So how do we simplify this? 
Well, you can draw a picture and convince that sine of u plus pi over 2 is just cosine of u, or you can use another trick identity to expand this guy. Sine of a plus b is just sine a cosine b plus sine b cosine a. And then what do we do here? Well, there are a couple terms that we know the value, right? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So the first term is gone, the second term just left with cosine of u. Alright, so this guy, this integration reduced down to just integration from 0 to pi over 2, ln of cosine u du, but we deduced earlier. This is the first fact actually that we did, that this guy is just i. So this is i, this is also i, so the whole thing is just half of i plus i, which is just i. So I don't know about you guys, but I think this is a very nice problem. It kind of asks you to do a lot of tricks to this integration. And all those tricks are standard tricks like double angle formula or use substitutions. So this is my one solution to this problem. If you want to see what other people think about this, I'm going to leave a link to original tweet in the description down below. If you can come up with another way to solve this problem, please let me know in the comment section down below. And for today, thank you so much for watching. My name is Kuang and you're watching n 2 Peace. Do you use a steel check? Do you use a steel check?